Well, it's great to be with you all. If you are visiting, I want to add my welcome. My name is Matt. It is always such an honor to have those of you who are visiting with us this weekend. And want to also welcome those who are catching this across the street uh, or online, however we have this time together. We've been working our way through a series Uh, We're three weeks in now, but we've called The God Who. We've been looking at actions of God. And a few years ago, uh, I did a little Bible study uh, just on my own. I started in Genesis and began to read through. And I looked for any time a verb was attributed to God. Anytime the Bible said that God took action of some kind, I just marked what kind of action God was taking. I wanted to see what all does God do? And I found something really that surprised me. That as I read through and I looked for verbs, I looked for actions of God, I found that as the chapters unfold and as the the books unfold throughout the Bible, that God does more and more and more and more. There are more verbs and more verbs and more verbs. You might think that he would start out with a lot of action and then kind of kick it to us and and do less and less and less. But that's, that's not at all what the Bible says. Our God is a very active God. In fact, if you ever want to, just just start in Genesis. Just do the book of Genesis, and it'll blow your mind and expand your thoughts and your awareness of all that God is doing. He's an active God. And so in this series, we've chosen just a few of those actions. We could spend the rest of our lives looking at actions of God, but we've just chosen a few. He's the God who blesses. He's the God who renews. And today, I want us to see that He's the God who calls. He is a God who calls. You are called by God. In 1876, the very first phone call was received by a man named Thomas Watson, Alexander Graham Bell, placed a phone call to Thomas Watson, and Thomas picked up the phone, and he heard these words, Mr. Watson, come here, I want to see you. Those were the first words ever received on a phone, and it changed the world. So that uh, how many of you, just out of curiosity, how many of you have a phone with you today? Uh, That's kind of what I figured. In fact, uh, let me ask it this way. Anyone not have a phone with them? Okay, a few brave souls. Amazing. Our phones, they have become like extensions of ourselves, like part of us. We don't want to be without them. It's practically unimaginable for most of us, obviously not all of us, to not have our phones with us. We don't want to miss a call. We don't want to miss a text. Nothing. We are a connected people. And if somebody is trying to get a hold of us, we are going to know it. Well, the Bible is very clear that God is a God who calls. And he is calling every one of us, not by phone, but by his word and by his spirit. You are called by God, every one of us. And I don't want you to miss his call. I want you to recognize and respond to God's call in your life. And so I want to just point out in Scripture just a few ways that God calls every one of us. The first call that God makes to every one of us is a call to salvation. God calls us all to new life with him. It's the call that God has made to humanity ever since the very beginning. In fact, I want want you to hear 
how it begins in the book of Genesis. There are some scriptures in your bulletin uh, and will be on the screens as well. But Genesis starts with God speaking to creation, or speaking rather creation into existence. And when he creates the first man and woman, God speaks to them about life with him in his creation. God speaks about his plans for humanity, the purposes for which he created us. He speaks about the freedom that he has created for them. He tells them about all that he's given them, and he tells them exactly what will destroy life as they know it. He says to Adam and Eve in the garden, there's a way to lose life, and I don't want that for you. And that's always where temptation appears for us. Will I really lose if I do this? Can I really trust what God said about this? Do I believe him? Will it really harm anyone? It's not that big of a deal. Shouldn't I know what I'm missing? Just just a taste is all. I won't go any further than that. And that's where we pick up the story in Genesis chapter 3. The woman was convinced. She saw that the tree was beautiful and its fruit looked delicious. And she wanted the wisdom it would give her. So she took some of the fruit and ate it. And then she gave some to her husband who was with her. And he ate it too. And at that moment, their eyes were open and they suddenly felt shame at their nakedness. So they sewed fig leaves together to cover themselves. And when the cool evening breezes were blowing, the man and his wife heard the Lord God walking about in the garden. They hid from him. First time. This is a new experience for them. They hid from him among the trees. Then the Lord God called to the man, where are you? That's the first time God calls out to humanity right there. Where are you? He replied, I I heard you walking in the garden, so I hid. I was afraid because I was naked. Did you ever see that TV show, Naked and Afraid? Anybody watch that? Anybody afraid to say you watched it in church? (laughs) We all know what it's like to be ashamed, to be found out. We've all tried to work the hiding program. I'll never forget one time when my son Luke was about three years old, and we, we... found him, we, we came on, you know, found him in the hallway drawing on the wall with a crayon and he knew he shouldn't be doing that and he took off running saying, don't see me, don't see me. <laughs> <laughs> you know that feeling. God has spoken about life He's spoken about his plans for humanity. But after Adam and Eve reject God and reject his plans for them, things change. They used to want to be close to God. But suddenly they're hiding and covering. And God doesn't speak to them at this point. This is when he calls them. There's a biblical distinction between God speaking and God calling. God calls us when we aren't where he wants us to be. He calls when he wants to get our attention. God calls when he has a purpose for us, when we've turned our backs on him, when we're hiding, when we've broken our relationship with God and chosen to live like we don't need him. That's when God calls us. God calls us to be who and where we aren't yet. But it's who and where God wants us to be. Think about that moment in the Garden of Eden. Think about that feeling 
of having something you need to hide, something you want to just forget happened, or at least you don't want anyone to know it's happening. Don't see me. Don't see me. We all know what it's like to hide with that suffocating effect of shame. But think of the love that Adam heard in God's voice when God called out to him. Where are you? God will always call us out of hiding and into new life with God. It's his call for your salvation. It's his call to new life. Come here. I want to see you. When we aren't living by what God has said to us in his word, when we're ignorant of what he's spoken, when we are uncertain of whether we like his word, that's when God doesn't speak to us. He calls us. Where are you? Come here. I want to see you. That's not where I want you to be. That's not what I want for you. Where, why are you hiding there? Your fig leaves aren't covering it. Come here. Let me cover you you with something better God called to Adam to come out of that hiding place and it's his call of salvation for every one of us it's his call to be covered by the sacrifice of his son to be made new by the same power that raised Jesus Christ from the grave It's a new life. The one who created life to begin with has shown that he has the power to give new life. And it's his greatest desire to give it to you. It's his greatest desire to say, come here. Come to where I am. Come into life with me. Don't hide. Let me cover you. Let me save you from what you've done. Let me make you new. You are called by God and you are called out of hiding. You are called out of a life of sin and shame. You are called back from your rebellion. You are called to salvation. It's for you. Answer it. If you've never responded to God's call to new life with Him, you can respond Today, you can say, yes, Lord, see me, cover me, save me. I want new life with you. Thank you for loving me and giving your son for me. You can pray and accept him right now, and I pray that you do respond to God's call even by the time you leave here today. And I want to tell you two other ways that God calls every one of us. Because when God calls us to new life, He's got new life for us. He's got plans and purposes and meaning for us. So once we respond to God's call to new life with Him, we discover that He keeps calling for transformation. God calls us to be what we cannot make ourselves. Adam and Eve come out of hiding wearing fig leaves, but God doesn't leave them that way. God loves you just the way that you are today, right now. He could not love you less than He loves you right now. He could not love you more then he loves you right now. His love for you is entirely perfect and complete. He loves you just the way you are, fig leaves and all. And he loves you enough to not leave you like that. This is, the one, this is one of the upside down truths about the gospel. That God calls you new, And then he helps you live new. God calls you what you aren't yet. And then he helps you become that. God calls you and then he helps you become what he calls you. He calls us to new life and then he keeps calling us to live into that new life. God calls us what we cannot make ourselves. Let me try to explain this with Jesus. Matthew's gospel records a story. It says, as Jesus was walking beside the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon called Peter, 
and his brother Andrew. And they were casting a net into the lake because they were fishermen. That's what they did. That's who they were. Come and follow me, Jesus said, and I will send you out to fish for people. And at once they left their nets and followed him. Going on from there, Jesus saw two other brothers, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, and they were in a boat with their father Zebedee preparing their nets. And Jesus called them, and immediately they left the boat, and their father, uh, they left their father, and they followed Jesus. Very familiar Bible story, but it's part of a bigger story. If you read through all four Gospels, you'll find that Jesus called these men to follow him multiple times in multiple situations. More than once, they were inspired to drop their nets and say yes to Jesus' invitation and follow him. But a funny thing, they kept going back and picking up their nets again. And maybe you have been inspired by an invitation to follow Jesus, but there are times when you find yourself picking up old nets. Jesus said to fishermen, I'm going to teach you how to fish for people. I'm going to call you to be something that you aren't, something that you don't even know how to do. And in the process of them becoming what Jesus said they would be, they went back to their nets. And I wonder if there are some old nets in your life You've said yes to Jesus, but you keep finding yourself picking up some old nets, thinking about those old nets, some old ways of talking and some old ways of living. And Jesus calls you to himself over and over and over again. You got to hear how Paul explains this in 1 Corinthians He writes a letter to people who have heard and they've responded to God's call for salvation. But Paul's got to remind them that yes, he called you to salvation and he's still calling you. Keep walking with him. You're not done yet. 1 Corinthians says, this letter is from Paul, called to be an apostle of Christ Jesus by the will of God and from our brother Sosthenes. Paul starts with himself as an exhibit A to say, I'm Paul, I'm called, and I'm becoming what I'm called. I'm writing to God's church in Corinth to you, he says, who have been called by God to be his own holy people. And then listen to this. He made you holy by means of Christ Jesus, just as he did for all people everywhere who call on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, their Lord and ours. He called you holy and then he made you holy. There are some things that God has called us and we're not experiencing it all yet. We still have to walk with him some more. We've got to follow him further. We've got to trust that there are some things he's going to do in my life that he hasn't done yet. But he says that he's going to do those things. There's freedom. There's learning. There's discipleship. There's maturity in walking with Christ. And he keeps calling us there. And now he's going to drive this point home, Paul, to the people in in, uh, Corinth. In verse 26, he says, Remember, dear brothers and sisters, few of you were wise in the world's eyes or powerful or wealthy when God called you. You weren't there. Instead, God chose things the world considers foolish in order to shame those who think they're wise. He chose things that are powerless to shame those who are powerful. God chose things despised by the world, things counted as nothing at all, and he used them to bring to nothing what the world considered important. And as a result, no one can ever boast in the presence of God. God has united you with Christ Jesus for our benefit, God made him to be wisdom itself and Christ made us right with God. He made us pure and holy and he freed us from sin. Therefore, as the scriptures say, if you want to boast about anything, boast only about the Lord. God calls us and then he makes us what he calls us. Are you with me? 
What does God want to make of you? What will he do with you if you are willing to keep responding to Jesus? Do you trust God to not just call you out of hiding, but to change you? Do you believe that he can save you from the sins of your past and make you new? Are you willing to live like he will do just that? He will make you what he calls you. I love this quote from Charles Spurgeon. He says, God neither chose them nor called them because they were holy. He called them that they might be holy. And holiness, he says, is the beauty produced by God's workmanship in them. Thank God for his willingness to call a sinner out of hiding and to call me what I wasn't and to make me what he says I am. Are there some old ways of life that God is still calling you to let go of, to drop, to walk away from? Are there some nets you keep going back and picking up and God calls us for salvation so that we can have new life with him and then God calls us for transformation so that we can become what we can't make ourselves? And God has a great purpose for all of this. Because ultimately, he's calling all of us to a great mission with him. God calls us to call others. He had to call some fishermen to drop their nets and to learn to do something that they didn't know how to do on their own. Remember, God always blesses us to become a blessing. Remember his plan for the blessees to become blessers? When God calls us for salvation, he calls us for transformation, and he is calling us to be part of his saving, transforming work in this world. We can make the mistake of thinking that others are called for this mission. Others are called for that kind of thing. Isn't that why we have missionaries? Isn't that why we have pastors to do that other stuff? Listen, there is no team B in our church. There is no second string in this church. There is not a special class of supermen and women who God has called. There are only sinners called out to be saved here. There are only people whose lives are made new by Jesus here. We're just a bunch of people coming out of hiding here, believing that God calls us to new life and that he's, he keeps calling us to become what we couldn't make ourselves. That is the only kind of person God ever calls to mission with him, to call others. And that's why... That's why Paul writes in another place, he says, I'm a prisoner for serving the Lord. It's Paul's way of saying, I can't help but serve him. I can't do anything else. This is too big. This is too good. This is too real for me to just sit by and watch a bunch of people around me in hiding, play with their fig leaves. And God is on the move to save this sick world. And in the process, he's saving me and I can't just sit by and do nothing I can't say nothing I've got to be one who calls out to others Paul says I beg you to lead a life worthy of your calling for you have been called by God you ever get a call and let it go to voicemail maybe you don't know the number or maybe you're in a meeting, or maybe you know exactly who's calling you. <laughs> and so you let it go to voicemail. Paul says, check your voicemail. You have been called by God. I love what Peter says about this. He says, you're a chosen people. You are royal priests. A holy nation, God's very own possession. And I can only imagine the first people that received that letter from Peter thinking, who's he talking about? <laughs> if he thinks this about us, he's going to be disappointed. 
But Peter knows that when God calls us for salvation, it's because he's going to keep calling us to make us what we can't make ourselves because he's got a mission of transformation for this world and for us to be some who call out to others and say, you've got to know about this. So Peter says, as a result of God calling you, you can show others the goodness of God. For he called you out of the darkness into his wonderful light. Once you had no identity as a people, but now you are God's people. Once you received no mercy, but now you've received mercy. You've got a story to tell. You've got a testimony. You've got something to tell others about. You are called chosen. You are called royal priests. You are called holy. And God is committed to making us what he calls us. I just don't know if we believe it. You may not know what God will accomplish through your life. It could be as simple as a phone call. It could be as simple as an invitation to church or an invitation to dinner in your home. There are so many ways for us to call others to know Jesus. God may call you to call out to one other person in this world. Or God may call you to call whole nations to know his truth and his love. I think about this coming weekend as we recognize Martin Luther King Jr. That if ever there was a man called with a calling on his life to make a difference in this world. But you know, he didn't start out on the steps of the Lincoln Memorial. It started long before that, that that man heard the call of God to salvation. And he heard the call of God to keep following and to keep following and to keep following. And he became a voice calling out to us so that his words ripple and echo through generations, still calling us to God's saving and transforming work. It was only because he was willing to drop some nets long before that and to follow Jesus and to be faithful to Jesus that he became a man who was able to call out the racism and prejudice in this world because he was convinced of the power of God's love and God's desire to call all sinners out of hiding and make them new. God can call a whole nation through an individual. But God will also reveal his love to individuals through a thousand little whispers of grace spoken by moms and dads and teachers and friends and co-workers. We all know people in darkness. We all know people who have no idea how much God loves them. People who don't know what God can do with them. We recognize it when we see it in others because we used to see it in ourselves before we knew the power of God's love to change us. And that's why God chooses to call us to be the ones who call others. A.W. Tozer said, God is looking for people through whom he can do the impossible. What a pity, he says, we plan to do only the things we can do by ourselves. But if God called into existence what didn't exist, what could he do with you? He's the God who calls. He calls the impossible into being. He never stops calling this crazy world to know him and receive him. He called Adam out of hiding. He called Moses from the burning bush. He called the Israelites out of Egypt. The Bible says that God calls the earth to move from the rising to the setting of the sun. And he calls every star by name. He calls forth every generation from the beginning of time, the Bible says. That he calls the foolish to wisdom and the lost to redemption. He calls us by name. And he calls us his own. He calls those who are asleep 
to wake up. He calls the faithless to return to faith and he calls the captives to freedom. The Bible says that Jesus called Lazarus back to life and that he called the destitute to receive his favor. He called James and John and Peter and Andrew out of their boats and away from their nets and he called Matthew out of his tax booth. He calls the first last and the last first. He calls sinners to repentance and he calls them saints. All who believe, the Bible says he calls his children He calls us to his purposes and he calls us his people. He calls us loved and he calls us to peace and to hope. And he calls us friends. He calls us by grace and he calls us to freedom. He calls us out of darkness and into his light. He calls us to display the power of his gospel even when we're suffering. He calls us to receive blessing. He calls all to eternal life. And those he calls, he justifies and he glorifies. And through all who hear him, who respond to him and receive his call, he desires to call out all the world that they will know that he is the Lord and there is none like him and there is none who can do what he can do. His mercies are new every morning. His love is unfailing and his grace is abundant. There is no one who is outside the reach of his voice. He's the God who calls you and most important call you will ever answer is God's call in your life today. Tommy, would you come wherever you are? And so before we're done today, I want you to have an opportunity to respond to God's call. Some of you in this room, you've heard that call to salvation. Maybe you've heard it Tonight, and, and for whatever reason, tonight, today, this, this time right now is when God is saying, come here. I want to see you. I, I, I saw you in the trees and the fig leaves. I saw you hiding. I know what's going on in your life. Come out of hiding. Come out of hiding because I've got a whole life to do with you, a new life. And if you're here and you need to come out of hiding for the very first time, you need to come out of hiding and say, Jesus, I'm trusting you to make me right with God and to give me a new life. I pray that you do that right now. I pray that you do not leave this place before you pray and say, God, it may not even feel comfortable speaking to him. But I I promise you this, he's waiting to hear you. He's waiting to see you come out of that hiding place and say, God, I want what you have for me. Forgive me for what I've done. I'm trusting you to make me new. And if you pray a simple prayer like that, he promises that he is entering your life and he will make you new. There's some of you in this place today and you know what those fishing nets are that you keep finding yourself picking up. And I just want to tell you again, put him down because he's calling you again. And he's going to keep calling. And he's going to keep calling. And somewhere along the way, as you drop the nets and you drop the nets and you drop the nets, you're going to find after a while, he's making you new. He is making you new. And every one of us here, if you know the love of God that has been shown 
to you through Jesus Christ. There isn't anybody else on the planet that God is trusting except for his people, those who know his love. Those are the ones that God is saying, call out, call out, call out to those. Call to the ones you know are in hiding who need to come out. Call to the ones that you work with and you live with who need to know how loved they are by God. And if you're in this place and you want to say, God, use me in that way, bring to mind someone who I can call out to. If you want to be that person, would you just stand with me in this place as we commit ourselves to worship him? If you want to be a church that says, God, use us to call out about your salvation. If you want to be that church, would you stand with me? And let's declare to God as we worship him before we go. Yes, Lord, we hear your call and we are responding. 